When Howard Carter first revealed the tomb of King Tut to the world, gold captured the fancy of nearly everyone on earth. Certainly, our modern world is fascinated by gold because gold is the standard upon which our economy has been based for thousands of years. To us, gold is opulence, but in the days of Tut, gold had a slightly different significance. Gold was divine. Most would say that Egypt's golden age began during the reign of Tut's grandfather, Amenhotep III, also known as the Dazzling Sun King. But really, Egypt's golden age began in the time of the Pharaoh we studied in my class last semester, the amazing Tutmos IV. It was during his tenure that the Nubian gold mines began producing gold in unprecedented amounts. Likewise, most experts would end Egypt's golden age with the end of Amenhotep III, largely because the academic world only wishes to disparage the administration of his successor, Akhenaten, often referred to as the heretic king. Yet, did Egypt appear to be still enjoying a golden age at the time of King Tut? <laughs> it sure looks like that to me. And based on the world's reaction to Tut's treasures, I would say popular opinion says that it looks like a golden age to them too. And based on the body of correspondence between heads of state, some of which is actually addressed to Tut, in the opinion of kings in the ancient world, those days in Egypt were a golden age because these letters verify that, quote, gold was like dust in Egypt, end quote. I would argue that the golden age persisted for more than a century after Tut. But this semester, we will study what caused the golden age and what was the Egyptian response to it. We will also examine what life was like for the Israelites during this same time. It's a fascinating study. I hope that you will join us. My name is Pamela O'Neill, and the name of my Zoom class this semester is Egypt's Golden Age. But maybe you would rather learn the material from a previous semester, classes such as the life of Joseph in Egyptian history. That semester of study provides substantial evidence for the historicity of the biblical Joseph, or learn about what happened in Egypt during the time between Genesis and Exodus. How did the Hebrews come to be so despised and enslaved in Egypt? Or what about studying the early life of Moses in Egypt, learning about his adoptive mother and his extended family? Or what were the plagues and the events of the Exodus like for ordinary Egyptians, which is a study that really takes two semesters to fully comprehend, and those who took last semester's class, the aftermath of the Exodus in Egypt, understand why I would make such a statement. The best evidence of the Exodus is found in its wake. All of these classes are available through Lifelong Learning's video only class options. Whatever you choose, it is my honor to study Egyptian history with you and its connection to biblical history. According to Solomon, knowledge is more desirable than gold 
And there are eternal treasures, much greater than gold, to be discovered in this semester's Zoom class, Egypt's Golden Age.